What is glory? What is that entity? What does that word really mean? It's a part of our language. It is a part of our religious experience. It is common to us. But I don't think that we understand the potency of this word glory. It is sprinkled throughout scripture from the Old to the New Testament. Constantly there are references to this word glory. In the Greek text, it is called doxa. And doxa simply means splendor. It means divine splendor. It, it means splendor that comes from association not with one who is great, but it comes from the one who is greatest. Glory means that God himself has a character trait that is exclusive only to him. Nobody else can have glory. We can experience it, but we cannot have it. We cannot own it. You cannot possess it. It is someone that, it is something that one who is superior gives to those who are inferior. Glory. It is, it is, it is a word that tells us that God has a ladder of divine excellence which attends only to him after certain things are in order. Now Moses understood this. In Exodus 33, Moses prays a prayer. And he asks God to show him his glory. So if he wanted to see his glory, obviously there is a distinction between presence and glory. And, and how often we get caught up in divine presence. And I love his presence, don't you? Um, I, I love to feel him. I, I love to feel his presence in a service. Or it may not be in a service. You have to watch yourself sometimes when you're driving down the highway. And your mind starts to think of the goodness of Jesus and then all that he has done for you. And before you know it, your hands will come off the wheel and you can experience the presence of God, but even though you experience his presence, there is a, a higher experience and that is the glory of God. And, and, and Moses wanted the higher. He says, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of business as usual. I, I, I'm, I'm tired of the ordinary and, and the routine. I, God, I, I need you to do something else for me. Sure, sure, I know you in terms of presence. I, I know that you are the God who calls one and appoints one and anoints one, but, but there's got to be something else. There, there is a higher level. There is a, and the old folk used to call it the higher heights and, and the deeper depths. And so, so Moses says, now Lord, I, I want you to show me, de demonstrate it, show it to me. I, I, I need some representation where I am from where you are. I want you to show me. There, there is something that you know that I don't know, but I know that what you know, I can know. And what you have, I can have. So I want you to show me your glory. And you know, I, I, I sat tonight and I, I saw God about to introduce us to his glory. I, I, I saw him about to take us to a level of divine splendor. Hmm? I, I, I saw him about to take us there, but, but, and I'm not being critical, I'm just preaching, all right? Uh, but, but, but somehow or another, we can miss 
his, his glory. Because sometimes what we're doing here takes precedence over what he's doing there. And, and, and I've been, I have enjoyed this night, but, but I feel like I kind of missed something. Because we were on the edge, we were on the, the cutting edge of something supernatural about to happen. I, I can't hear you. And, and that's what Moses was, was saying to God. I, I want to get into the deeper recesses of the supernatural. I, I want to walk around where you walk around. I, I want to feel what you feel. I, I want to know the reality of God who is sovereign. Jehovah Elohim who is sovereign and does whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to as long as he wants to. Lord, show me thy glory. We, we are in a year of, of celebration of a glorious past. And, and that word glorious has as its root glory. So in our past, there has been glory. We're, we are not strangers to glory. And, and if you want to know one of the salient things that, that Bishop Mason did in birthing this church, he made us aware of and therefore sensitive to the glory of God. Now, now glory is something that is born from worship. You, you cannot taste glory. You cannot know glory if you're not a worshiper. Can I talk for a minute? Let, let, let's have a little dialogue for, for a few minutes here. Un, unless you can, can worship the Lord, and, and worship, you know, is not praising God for what he's done. No, 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 not worship. When you get to worship the Lord, you give him what he is entitled to, merely because of who he is. Worship is based in the isness of God. It's, it's because of who you are. It's because you are king of kings and lord of lords. It's because your name is excellent in all of the earth. It is because from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. It is because before the morning stars sang together, before there was a where, when, or a this or then, before there was a Tyrannosaurus Rex, before there was even history or anybody to record it, you were in existence and I worship you because of who you are. And when one worships God, then God allows us to, to have a little taste of his glory. I'm going to get to the text in a minute because somebody is grading me on preaching. I'll be there in a minute. You never announce a text and don't deal with it, so I'm going to deal with it in a minute. But in fact, I'm dealing with it right now. So, 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 so um, to, to know the glory of God, one has to be a worshiper. And, and when we worship him, Jesus talked about that. He said, the hour is come and now is that, that all who worship him, you, you must worship him in, in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. So, so if you want to taste glory, you got to get out of yourself. Hello. <laughs> And, and, and spirit has to speak to spirit and, and, and my spirit communicates with the Holy Spirit and, and you know communication is a two way street there has to be a speaker and a listener uh, talk to me and, and when I start speaking to him he speaks back to me and, 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 and he speaks to me and I speak to him and, and we create an unending circle of talking and communicating with each other it is from the fertile soil of worship that glory is born. So now, God chooses the children of Israel for the purpose of revealing his excellence. God is by no means standard. He's by no means ordinary. He is not routine. He's, he's not just somebody else. He's, he's God. And so he chooses Israel to reveal his glory. Even the 